their act together a little bit towards the end of this split here. But Sooning, their most played champion so far is that Gwen. Bin is thoroughly in love with this pick, and I would not be at all surprised to see their first pick together. Something I am surprised about, though, is that Nocturne hasn't been banned here. And Sooning prioritizing the, the Gwen for Bin, but this gives a window for OMG to pick this one up. And Nocturne on 11.13 with Strybreaker is so strong. It's a triple flex. I feel like this is arguably the best in multiple roles, just with how good he is. Mm -hmm. uh, we are actually seeing the Strybreaker nerf next patch. This is like the one competitive patch where you have a window to abuse yeah. it. And we're talking about OMG dive compositions. This is a good start already. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? Angel takes away the Silas, though. So uh, we always talk about Cream's champion pool. The Akali was banned. The Viego has been banned. The LeBlanc has been banned. Silas taken away. But this Yasuo, we've already seen Cream play it. It's amazing alongside the Diana, the uh, the insane combination of ultimates that you could see coming on through. They've played it once, they've won with it once, and it's locked in again, Orcs. I'm already excited. I mean, the combo between the Moonfall and the Yasuo ult, the last breath is so powerful. And again, so much dive already put in here. We have these strong skirmishes from Sooning, but the instant impact is there for OMG. And see the Diana as well, which I think rises in priority this patch. Rumble kind of being pushed out of the jungle. When you need AP uh, in the jungle, it's, it's, it's often that premier pick. And now bot lane's still open and available. OMG are targeting those defensive supports, the Thresh, already been taken away we could see something like the tom kench targeted as well samira taking off the board here which i'm not i can't say i was coming into this one anticipating able plague samira i don't know whether that's like scrim information that these guys have it's not something he's played on stage so far this split but we have seen him play things like the tristana we've seen him play a lot of kaiser so these kind of aggressive ad carry so maybe a similar vein in the eyes of Sooning, but OMG banning away the virus and the Thresh to make sure that Huan Fong and On can't have too safe of a laning phase. Yeah, that's the thing is that I, I feel like we've seen a lot of Aki want to play towards the top side. And also in this game, you are on a Diana, which isn't going to spike as early as the Lee Sin. You don't have as much presence before level six. So definitely want a, a bot lane matchup where you can be comfortable and virus causes a lot of issues. Ezreal makes complete sense in this situation. Very self-sufficient. You're able oh, to no. ult across that Moonfall combo. No, I just realized what's happening. I, th I think I figured it out. The reason they banned Samira, they banned Kaiser. They push Abel onto Ezreal. This is the obvious pick for Abel here. After the Thresh was banned, Aphelios is gone as well, right? Yep. Hongfong's a Draven player. Guess what Draven's real good in lane against? It's Ezreal. Yeah, I mean, We could see the, the Draven. Cluster works as okay. well. I think we've seen these super aggro early contesting AD carries as a specific counter into the Ezreal because that's the weakest point. Once he hits mid game, there's no real stopping the Ezreal, but in the early game, there's definitely uh, something to be said for punishing him. Cluster makes a lot of sense. I actually really like the Gragas for the disengage aspect here. So uh, it wouldn't, would make sense for me to pick it up. Rakan also works. I think anything that can sort of find those engaged opportunities, but also able to peel a fair amount would work effectively. I feel like Nautilus would be a, a, a solid pick, but it's going to be the Alistair. This is, I believe, the first game of Alistair that On is going to be bringing to the stage today. So excited to see what he can do alongside that Kalista. Very aggressive bot lane. The 2v2 for Sooning is not something that has been praised across the course of this split. On especially, his lane in crit size pretty largely. So I'm excited to see them bring in a much more aggressive pairing to the table and the Rel going to be locked in against the Alistair, which is kind of interesting because when Rel first entered the meta, it felt like Alistair was often the answer that was picked to face Rel. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit of a skill matchup. There's a little bit of timing with regards to interrupting. I've seen a lot of scenarios where you headbutt to interrupt the, the dismount and then you end up getting caught in the knockup. But even so, I, I think uh, Wang Fong and On are really happy with this matchup. Uh, it really is on OMG to sort of stabilize this bot lane. They do have the big engage tools from the Rel later. They do have the Ezreal, who's got a lot of value in the mid game, but it's definitely a pressure point for Sooning. And overall, we kind of get this, this difference between these two compositions where I look at the side of OMG and I'm like, huge dive potential, super powerful ultimates that can just open the fight really strong. Whereas for the other side for Sooning, in the extended fights, they're going to get so much value. 
yeah, it definitely feels like with the Ren stacking up with, obviously, Gwen, the longer the fight is, the better it is for her. She just keeps the Conqueror stacked up permanently and just dances around the Silas as well, as you're mentioning. Definitely feeling good for Sooning in those long extended fights. I just want to quickly mention how satisfying that draft was because both teams picked their comps in the exact order. No trades yep. whatsoever required. That was very, very pleasing to watch. Uh, let's talk OMG's comp though, because once again, they have the Nocturne. They have this Hasaki Fall combo, as, as Dagda likes to call it. The Ezreal that can be safe and Rel that can jump in on these dive compositions. Definitely screams OMG to me, but do you think it's gonna have the firepower required to face up against what Suning are bringing to the table? I think it's gonna come down to execution. The, the one thing I'm concerned about is the early levels. I think once OMG hits level six, they should be sort of uh, clean sailing if they hadn't fallen too far behind. But I'm a little bit concerned about the bot lane vulnerabilities early. I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that Dana isn't the best compared to at least in pre six. But if they get to level six, they haven't been really challenged. I'm confident that they have the tools to sort of deliver on this one. And really it comes down to them executing team fights. For the most part, they have been pretty good at that. It just depends whether they, they choose the right team fights, which, you know, that's been the issue we've seen with them. Yeah, it really has. I will say, Suning are definitely one of the teams that the pace in the early game often very, very slow. Don't usually see this team really pushing the envelope too much in the early stages. The laning phases are not the thing that people often talk about with Suning, aside from Bin, right? We quite often see Bin popping off in the laning phase. However, when Suning do get a lead in the early game, they very regularly are able to snowball that and take over the game. Their mid game is, I would say, the strongest point in the game for them. Maybe the late game as well. Um, but it's the early game that's really going to be the interesting part. And as you're saying, OMG, theoretically, with the weaker early game, maybe this is an opportunity for Suning to prove me wrong on that aspect. Yeah, for sure. And I think it comes down to SRFM and what he can do. I actually like to see the Angel put down a ward on the enemy Raptor camp. And so what we can often see is mid laners will push up the lane and they'll put a ward over the wall. But when you can't find priority in the lane like we're seeing here, you don't get that opportunity. So Angel actually put the ward down just before the lane started. They have that information. And what we'll see is Aki's going to clear up to the top side. That ward will still be alive, I believe, when he starts his rafters. And then SRFM will have information. He can look to contest the Diana. And that's the strength of the Lee Sin. At level three, you do just outpace the Diana. And, you know... This is SFM we're talking about. It, you know he's going to go for that aggressive play. We literally saw it in the replays that we played at the start of today. Yep. How quite often he goes over aggressive for those kind of plays. You can see Aki there on the ward. SFM did get warded by Cream as well. We saw that on our screen just a moment ago. So both junglers with full information. Look at Abel's health bar. I'm not quite sure how the trade went down that aggressively without um, summoners getting burned, honestly, but already this lane matchup at the bottom side going pretty well for Suni. And this was the concern point. This was the, the rough the rough spot, uh, spot in the, the game for OMG is the spot lane matchup. And I think it's something we've seen when when Divine Sundra got buffed and people were picking Ezreal all the time. It kind of just seemed like such a good blind. You know, he's so safe, so hard to punish, scales so well and really good in the mid game. But then we've started to see people picking things like the Clister, like the Draven, into the Ezreal, making the laning phase hell. And if you put the Ezreal far enough behind, then it takes a long time for them to get back in the game. So I'm glad we're seeing this out from Sooning. I also like the fact that they're very aware Aki path towards topside. He can't go for the top skull because he knows Lee Sin will outmatch me. Gwen is able to move with Ignite. And so the, the thought process from OMG is, okay, I'll reset. I'll go to the river, I'll go for the bot scuttle. And because of the priority, we see Huang Fong and Ong Ooh. secure that one. You're in a 1v1 with Bin here. SFM hovering, but I don't think much more is going to come off of this one. And Bin already with full control of the lane in this top side. Minus CS lead, but that should be evened up with this next wave that arrives for new Cream and Angel keeping things even the only very significant lead is down in that bottom side but also sofm will have a minor xp lead like you're mentioning one of the crabs going his way none of them going to aki so it feels like yeah. so far so good for sooning but dan you were mentioning the level six point is it just for, for omg in this early game is it literally just button down the hatches try and clear the jungle try and clear your lanes and just wait and pray absolutely once you hit six this skirmishing power becomes 
a lot better for omg the ultimate pandana if you end up in like a 3v3 or even a 2v2 you can have a lot more impact so as much as we are seeing those little advantages pull ahead for Sooning, I think OMG are still perfectly happy with this. And you can see Aki's just still happy to keep farming up. His lanes are stable at the moment, so he's fine with the current scenario. Angel can be trained pretty heavily with Cream here. Drake coming up. In fact, it's just spawned onto the map. You saw Abel head over and drop a ward onto the Drake. It's something that Sooning potentially could look towards with that Callista, but they don't currently have push in that bottom side they're, they're keeping their wave very close to try and keep Abel away from the CS but being on the Ezreal he can farm pretty safely from a distance or can he? Ooh, they try to close yeah. the gap he will get away <laughs> he's all right but uh, get a little dicey yeah and it's just I'm constantly threatening with this Alistair but he doesn't go in for the combo because if you combo as Ezreal Arcane shifts and he buffers it then you lose all that pressure but by constantly threatening you see Abel he's, he's sort of playing with it has to respect it has to you know already be casting the Arcane shift when the combo comes in so ends up dropping it a bit early and is still very scared of this 2v2 bot lane between uh, the quest and the Alistair and if you're scared Cream probably should be in this situation yeah, Angel just hitting six here. SOFM not six. So they can't steal away the Asso ult and, and use the lead kick for the knockup, unfortunately. It's going to be very difficult to make that happen. I will say, one thing that's worth mentioning, Angel, if he does steal away the, um, the last breath from Cream, he can use his own E to proc the last breath to be able to use the Asso ult. So a, a small window of opportunity there for Angel if he can find a good opportunity 1v1. Uh, but definitely not quite finding the opportunities here for SFM in the early game. And when you're picking this Lee Sin, going for a farm off is not really the ideal situation. No, definitely not. And he has, you know, done little bits here and there to try and <laughs> have an advantage. Had he not just, find it until now? They, I think they just tethered on the recall to cancel the animation or something. So I think they only got a tiny bit of the... You know how you're like stunned for ages on the yeah. tether? I'm pretty sure they just skipped like half of it by using it in a recall. That's kind of crazy. I mean, that it's kind of smart because you think about if you tether level one, then you're locked in the animation for a long time, right? And like at a competitive, le competitive level, teams have stuff to do level one. You can't just be sitting in base, you know, doing some fancy animation. So they, they don't really need the tether in the early laning phase. So it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it to only use it now just before you hit level six and use that recall to cancel it. Um, so yeah, it makes makes quite a bit of sense. We do see that at this point, Dan is starting to clear pretty fast, has the Hextech alternator. Aki has hit that level six point. So overall, I think OMG pretty comfortable with how the game's gone so far. And now is where they get a little bit more agency. They get a little bit more tools to play with. Of agency. Oh, nice little wind wall from Cream. Keeps himself safe. Second attempt in the mid lane from SRFM. Second time that Cream is just A OK. -okay. And the only significant lead across the map is still going to be that bottom lane with a uh, about 12 CS lead. Similar story up in the top side. But realistically, we're talking about how Sooning had advantages in the early game. Doesn't feel like they've really pressed those advantages in any significant way as Cream. Goes in in this mid lane. Gonna miss his knockup though. Cold is there. Herald has spawned onto the map, and it feels like OMG are trying to make moves to look for that objective, but it's SOFM to start it off. Yeah, I think it's tricky because the priority is lacking in the bot lane. So Hong Fong's already moving up. You saw Ong there very early. And again, Bin prior to the top side means tuning out there. They're in position. They're ready to contest this one, but OMG look like they're confident to take this 5v5. Yeah, both AD carries are moving up. True Shop Barrage goes wide on the team as Abel arrives on the scene. Hong Kong going to be just arriving as well. Here we go. Paranoia through. Rift Herald going to be the target for both teams. I is available as New goes into the back line. It is going to be taken by Aki and a kill as well. Here they go with the Hasaki fall. Taking down everybody, but it's actually Sooning winning out the fight. I feel like I maybe was looking at the wrong team there. Maybe that was Angel pulling off the Moonfall after all. And Sooning managed to take that one. Silas versus Yasuo Diana hurts my brain, Orcs. 
yeah, there's too many ults flying around, but Angel was the one coming up clutch there. And I think OMG actually ended up making the wrong decision. They prioritized jumping on the SOFM. So we see the Nocturne dive straight onto this back line and they're focusing down the top jungle with this big combo. But they're pretty tanky. You can see the Gwen actually survives that and it gives Angel this perfect setup. Everyone's grouped up. You find the ult. The follow-up is there from the Alistair with the Callista ult. And then you see Huang Fong just able to clean up. If you group up like that, Suning is perfectly happy. And again, we highlighted this coming out of the draft. OMG have these big impact ultimates. They need to be winning the team fight off them. And I don't think taking out the jungler and chunking out Bin is enough value off those to win the fight. Yeah, I mean, the Moonfall coming out from Angel is actually just the perfect self on it pulls everyone into just one tiny little space for that on to get the pulverized get the fates call knock up as well it's too perfect but we've seen this before SOFM breeding a little bit for the chickens or is he maybe he's just set it up for the kill because creep is the one that gets taken out on was there angel on the scene as well and SFM. his love affair with the enemy chickens continues as he toyed with the idea of going over but he missed the sonic wave Drake is up if Suning want to go over for that one, but maybe Abel's the target instead has his E available. Arcane Shift will keep him safe. And that's exactly oh, that's the interaction you were talking about before. Oh, was his flash? Yeah, I think he might have used his Arcane Shift before. I'm not sure, but I did actually have to flash away there. And now in a little bit of trouble. A lot of pressure being applied in the spot lane and Suning pretty far ahead already in this game. SFM, we talked about it, likes to invade those camps. I think a critical thing here was that his team were there to follow him, which things tend to go better when your team are going with you. SFM, sometimes it's like, I'm doing it anyway. But uh, right now, Suning really coordinating well together. And OMG, it's starting to feel a little bit desperate. They are going for a cross map play here, looking towards the top side, but they're very quickly going to get matched out here with the bot lane of Suning heading on up. Yeah, you can see everyone moving over. Bin has recalled. He's heading off to the bot side now. As the full lane swap goes through, Drake isn't going to be up for another four and a half minutes, so it makes sense to put your bot lane on the top side of the map. Herald dropped by Abel. Remember, it was Abel that picked it up during the skirmish earlier on, so he's going to be able to get solo plate gold for three plates there. That is a massive gold swing in the bottom side. Yeah, definitely needed, though, because, I mean, we look at the gold between 80 carries. Wong Fong was super far ahead prior to that. Already had the shield bow in pocket thanks to that fight they had earlier where he was the main beneficiary. So, yeah. Actually, pretty vital <laughs> by all means. I, I think when you look at it, I'm saying it's a massive gold swing in favor of Abel, but he's still a thousand gold down. After just getting yeah. three plates to himself, still a thousand gold difference to the 80 carries. I think, kind of I think those gold values are static. I think that might have been before he got the, the plates because they've been the same value for a while. Uh, so I think he might be true. a bit closer now, not a still a full thousand down, but he was still the fact that you're you're finding the Herald, you're getting it to get all these plates on AD carry, and that's only like closing the gap isn't the ideal. You don't want to be closing the gap. You want to be pulling ahead, but OMG, not in the best situation. And again, SOFM looking to do as he does, and he's invading heavily, contesting these camps, stealing away that blue buff. There is Raptors up on the other side of the map, so I think Aki should pick those up quickly because I know someone who'd be very <laughs> interested in taking them from his hands. Oh, Angel's in trouble. There's the combo. What can you do? <laughs> I mean, there's no counterplay. The, the speed at which that can happen with Aki flashing in to set up the last breath for Cream. Honestly, it is just beautiful to watch. Seeing that combo yeah. pulled off nicely, it's, it's, it's a piece of art. And the thing is, we need more of that. We need consistently every fight. I want to see that sort of combo on multiple members. You can see on Angel, before he has the Sonya's available, before he's stopped much, it's just so quick to kill him. Easy to take him out. And again, <laughs> SFM looking for these invades. Look at this. <laughs> Goes in with the smite. No mid laner, no problem, <laughs> says Suning. It's Angel now TP's back to his mid lane. Suning, they don't give a monkeys. They know Moon falls down, and that means they get to play aggressive. OMG having to stack up just to defend the top side here. And now Recall's coming on through. I think we could see the lane swapped over once again. I don't know. What do you reckon, Orcs? How do you think OMG should be playing this next few minutes of the game? Because it feels like Suning are just completely in control. Yeah, I think you just want to dodge Suning whenever possible right now. If you have your ultimates up, that's where you can look for a contestion. Ideally, you want to pick someone off Ice Blade, like they did to Angel. If you kill someone from Suning, then you have a point of power. But... 
realistically you're still behind right now that cluster is super scary has the shield bow just picked up the uh the rage knife which obviously gives you a lot of sustained damage so i think you just want to be playing a really sort of cautious game in this situation and again cross map cross map cross map get the ezreal to his triumph spikes yasuo spikes at a similar uh sort of level and then you can love to sort of find a bit more agency in these team fights you don't need to contest tuning right now if they take the second dragon it's your second dragon you can wait for the third yeah, we'll have to see. The Herald going to be coming up in a second. Huang Fong's already up on the top side of the map. I fully expect Suning to be trying to just grab a second one of those for themselves. You mentioned the Rage Knife. I have to say, I think Rage Knife may be the funniest item name in the entire game. It is very much like Rage Blade for kids TM, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Rage Knife, I just think, is such a comical name for an ability. For, a, for an item, yeah. sorry. But it's pretty good. Uh, I rate it. Um, do you see... OMG looking like they're playing with a, a sort of bot, light, bot, bot lane lean, sorry, which I want to see that. I want to see, you know, you know that soon they're going to be going for this Herald on the top side. I think you should be leaning bot lane. I think playing around you a little bit. Um, but it looks like they're just, they're just playing the farm game. They're just playing it slow. They're not really sort of investing too much into this one. And Herald has not gone over to Sooning. Good chance that they just use this to secure their first turret, but really depends on where because top and bot are both like a herald away you throw that down that tower's gone you get the first tower it's a ton of gold but mid is often the one teams prioritize just because of how value it is with regards to how valuable it is with regards to opening up the map yeah we'll see where sofm is going to place that as you say mid definitely a priority but also the bonus on that is drake's just coming up in five seconds sooning already have the first Drake. you can slam the herald to buy yourself priority if you so wish oh no cold he's trying to face check he's trying to get vision trying to get any semblance of control the ignite is there and so fam misses the sonic wave cold actually gets away with it it felt like sooning thought they already had the kill I i'm pretty sure they could have followed up on that if they'd just been a little more aggressive yeah i think maybe they were scared of cream being like an old distance so maybe concerned about that but soon they've kind of dropped the ball a little bit here so because they they are they rotated their lanes to pick up this dragon they moved bin back back up to the top lane they went for the reset to get in position omg just went okay fine we'll just take the top tower and now they're actually only a thousand gold down again this second dragon isn't really that important you can always contest the third but because the suiting is like reallocation and the big thing was that they didn't have a uh, heavy priority it meant that omg could answer and now i feel like omg in a much more comfortable spot uh, spot we're seeing you know 2000 3000 gold leads earlier they've closed that gap quite substantially now yeah they really have it feels like omg are very much keeping themselves in the game and once again we're talking about this composition from omg that they just need one good opportunity when you look at this like insane combination of ultimate where you have new just blasting into the middle of everyone aki with his flashy ult to set up cream with his ult cold as well can set up cream for the last breath and then abel obviously can just play safe on the back line does feel like they will just need a singular opportunity even if you're down in gold if you one shot the entire enemy team it's not gonna matter all too much yeah, and particularly Huang Fong on this Callista, if you take him down, the knockdown is a massive threat. You know, that drive breaker slow just basically means your passive isn't there. And they're looking now. Ooh, hoo, hoo. You mentioned trying to take down Huang Fong. The reactions of this kid are insane. Manages to keep himself out of that. But it's still a massive win for OMG. Three minutes 45 until that next dragon. And we're saying third needs to be contested. Second is fine to go. Huang Fong will not have flash for that fight. So that play from Aki is essentially cemented an advantage further into the game. So when it does come to that dragon fight, you make that same play. In fact, you could use your own flash and Huang Fong doesn't have that summoner to escape. So definitely going to be tricky to take that fight for Sooning. For now though, I mean, I think they just oh, found yeah. Cream. Cream's in big, big trouble here. Will flash away, gets a knock up the that. wind wall on the Sonic wave. Cream is too clean. His mechanics are just always perfect. Yeah, found the window, and now that gives an opportunity for OMG to move over to cover him. There's no risk of, him, of them going for the play now, and SFM has to back away. This Herald actually pretty close to timing out, so I think they might just have to throw it down mid, although he does look like he's leaning towards the top side once again. It needs to be used quickly, though, and Aki's in position to help defend. 
it should be enough just to take down the tower but they won't be pushing up to that tier two and remember on this patch those tier two towers in the side lane are worth a lot of extra gold so when you're using the herald in this situation you'd love to at least get that second charge yeah it would be nice for them but it's not going to happen this time around they won't get that bonus gold at least in the short term i want to revisit items quickly orcs because it feels like in a couple of minutes we are going to have Probably a fight over Dragon. I doubt OMG are going to yeah. let that one go for free. Although I might have to hold the thought on items. Krim could be in trouble, but on backs away once more. We do have two full items now for Huan Fong on this Callista. Way, way ahead of Abel still as we continue through the game. But also Angel with that Everfrost finish getting towards the second item as well. Feels like when we get towards this Drake in two minutes, we could have multiple items across multiple carries here soon. Yeah, and I mean, the big one is Fong Fong looks so scary right now. And we already said the flash is down. I, I think it's, it's very clear that these ultimates from OMG, they just need to kill the Callista. If that doesn't happen, I really struggle to see how they come out ahead in this fight. Uh, and you're hoping that by the time you get to that point, Abel's going to be able to finish this Divine Sundra. He's nearly got the Mana Immune stack. We do see that Cream has got the Mortal Reminder as well. So applying that Grievous Wounds, which is pretty important. There's a lot of healing on the side of Sooning. And again, that kind of plays into how they want these extended fights. They want them to go longer. And Sooning, it's a minute 15 till the Dragon. They're already trying to get set up and established in the area. It is an Ocean Soul map. So it's actually a lot harder to maintain vision. There's a lot more brushes in the dragon pit, in the river. You need a lot more wards mm -hmm. to make sure that you are clean, you're sort of clear and not going to get engaged on from a flank. One minute until that Drake. You can see Kareem is up on the top side of the map right now, but he does have his TP available. And in fact, I think he's just going to make the long walk down. But both Angel and Bin also have the TP. So when it comes to controlling the side lanes, it is going to be even in terms of in terms of those global uh, summoners, but in terms of who can win the side lanes, you still have to favor Sooning. But OMG grouping up, trying to take control of River right here. Sooning, it feels like they're a little bit late to the party. Yeah, they went for a reset and didn't get back in time. OMG with that, the, the last wave essentially to take before moving in. But critical thing I want to point out with items, Abel now has to find Sundra, but stopwatch available. Oh, she didn't engage too soon. Oh, the Everfrost. Cream is low on HP. He survives, but now there's the flash forward from Angel to try and set it up. He goes down instead, though. And now onto Cream once more. Huan Fong with one kill for himself. He's exhausted. Look at Bin. have to be cautious not to get caught out. Throws in on. Back he gets onto the back line, but he's totally alone. It's a bit of damage on Huan Fong, but it's nowhere near enough. Bin takes out Aki. And Abel finds himself alone. Does have flash, has his E, gets out to safety, but bit of a weird fight from omg to be quite honest not enough in the tank and the critical thing is srfm is the one who goes for that initial engage we we're talking about the uh, moonfall combo with the Yasuo. by taking cream out of the fight forcing us all early we saw aki at the end going for the moonfall but no one was there to follow up they massively disrupted omg's engage and as a result come out with the fight and that dragon win i was actually about to talk about how you know we saw the flash being down for huang fong uh, but he, he bought a stopwatch ready for this fight, but he doesn't even need it. And we see this great engage from SRFM, gets the kickback into the Everfrost. And then we see the scenario where Cream is forced to ultimate here just to survive. And yes, they lose Angel, but it makes their team fight very disjointed. And again, it starts to become extended. Bin finds so much value here. And then this is Aki with the ult, but no follow up. No Yusuo, no uh, last breath. And as a result, nothing really comes from it. Yeah, rough fight there for OMG. And I want to point out that that was a critical moment in this game. I feel like that fight right there was the moment where OMG, if they can get the combo off, can flip things around, right? Can turn this game into a potential win. With, a, with that fight being a loss, with Sooning now on Ocean Soul Point, it feels a lot dicier able to Beautiful. to the side. The Sonic Wave is there. SOFM is... <laughs> It's too beautiful to watch. Like I don't, I'm speechless with some of the Lee Sin we're getting to see. Because SFM, not not usually that much of a Lee Sin player, but clearly still has the mechanics. It's been so crisp, especially there. I was looking at Abel. He had flash available. He was going up to the wall. You could tell Abel felt confident, able to get away. But a very swift combo left little time to react, and they're able to catch him out. And now Sooning. 
firmly in control of this game. They've taken down that mid tier one. They've pushed up their vision line and their one three one's pretty solid. I mean, I look at OMG, they have knocked in Yasuo, which typically like that's fine to deal with. But right now, Bin just feels like a problem they don't have an answer to. And it's not just in the side lane, it's also in those team fights. He's already so tanky, so powerful. And one thing we've seen is that typically Gwen's have kind of struggled if you set them behind because they often don't run the flash because you know you can dive them quite effectively if you have things like a renekton we see teams look to punish them and i thought that might have been an angle for omg because aki likes you know giving attention to new so much but because we didn't have the early agency bin has had a really chill time farming up and now he has kind of hit like that critical mass point where you didn't deal with them earlier it, it, it's very yeah. hard to deal with them now and it feels like Bin is one of those players that is exceptional on the Gwen anyway. I would argue he's one of the best, if not maybe the best Gwen in the entire league. But then on top of that, he's the kind of player that if you leave him alone, he will take over the game. So many teams yep. have succeeded against Sooning by camping Bin, whether he's on this Gwen or not. It works against Gwen, it works against Bin. Maybe that should have been just the strategy from OMG coming into this one, but it's not what we saw, and it means Bin is now set up in this monstrous position. Same for Wong Fong, who is on, I think, three items at this point as we head towards a fight by the looks of things. Cold could be the target as SOFM does get his Sonic Wave in. Two minutes until the Drake, Sooning toying with the idea of a fight because if they could kill just a couple of members, they've got a Callista, they could just run it back. Yeah, uh, exactly. And it's really scary right now for OMG because we're talking about those big ultimates, but I look over the side of Sooning. Who's the target? Because Gwen isn't a good target, has Zonyas. Angel has Zonyas. Huang Fong has that stuff watch, has Ninja Tabby shield bow, and I believe is building towards the wit's end now. So it, you don't even have easy targets to take out. And my concern is that it's at the point where with this gold discrepancy, even if you somehow manage to kill Huang Fong, right? Let's say, you know, he, he doesn't press his stuff watcher as flash, then you still have Bin and Angel to deal with. And he has now just based and pick up that wit's end. So a lot of resistances on this Clister, very hard target to take down, but because the Clister's so far ahead, still putting out a lot of damage. And like, look, this is the point in the cast where usually I'd be like, look, you sound like you're you're pretty convinced that this is one-sided. You're pretty convinced for Sooning, right? And usually I'd be like, break it down. What does OMG need to do in this situation? But let's be honest, this composition from OMG is the same as every composition from OMG. The way it works <laughs> is you go in and you all press R. And if they die, fantastic. We won the game. If they don't die, ah. Well, we hadn't really thought that far ahead. We, we were just hoping they would all die. Yeah, we go game two if that happens. So it'll be a blobfish <laughs> game, and you hope for the angler next time. Both well, teams yeah. setting up now 20 seconds to drag in. OMG need a big convincing engage. They cannot let what happened before happen again. They need to be the ones starting the fight. And I think I'm trying to fish towards Bin here a little bit. Do you see Huang Fong's finding priority mid? So OMG, they're not contesting that wave. They just want to take the fight. All right, keep your eyes on Aki. He's the one that has to set this up or cold. The Cream's ulti will be the difference hey, maker. No, it won't. See you later. That's going to be a couple of knockups. That's going to be the last breath as well. Maybe this is the opportunity. Bin goes down. One Fog's still going strong, though. And that's a lot of disruption coming in from on. Aki on the sideline gets one. One Fog kiting away in this fight. Still going strong. Still surviving as SOFM grabs himself the double kill. There's another one coming through. New trying to chase him down. But One Fog is He's still alive. alive. Oh. He jumps over the wall. It's too good from Zuning. It's as you said, Orcs. You just can't kill them all. Oh my god, I cut Abel dies at the start of the fight and OMG still manages to make it look competitive, but they just could not kill Huang Fong. The resistance is on this semi-tank Callista. Too much for them to deal with. And honestly, Huang Fong played this spectacularly perfect, especially that jump over the wall at the end. OMG nearly brought it back, but it just wasn't enough. And it's exactly what you talked about before, right? If you do get in and manage to finish off Wong Fong, well, Bin is going to be a huge threat to deal with. If you manage to get in and take off Bin, like we just witnessed, then it's going to be Wong Fong that takes over the fight. Now, Baron getting started off by Sooning. They have the Ren from Callista. This will not be smite stealable by Aki. True shot barrage. Ooh. Oh, that was a little too close for comfort. <laughs> but it's soon to get away with it in the end. Yeah, and now Ocean Soul and Pocket Baron as well. 
5,500 gold lead. This game is feeling even more comfortable. GA picked for Huang Fong. And I all came off this fight. So watch this engage. Again, SUFM flawless here. This is a flash Ezreal, but flash Wardhop kick. No chance to respond. Straight away on comes in. But I thought the fight was looking rough here. They find a really nice combo onto the mid and top. Bin ends up going down. Angel only just survives on a tiny bit of HP. But watch Wong Fong from this point forward. They know he's the priority target, but he's kiting constantly. Stopwatch is there as the fear comes in. And then he starts kiting once more. And again, they're trying to lock him down. They're trying to CC him. And this moment, the fear is about to come in. Jumps over the wall. No one there to capitalize on it. And it's just beautiful play coming out from Sooning there. It was a nice engage from OMG, but not able to deal with the cluster. <laughs> and when you look at the damage, actually SOFM was really the carry in that fight. I feel like Wong Fong was the, he was the distraction, was right? The bait, Everyone yeah. thought he was the threat. And SOFM's just cleaning up in the meantime. He's already got a GA, by the way. We've got two GAs, one on Wong Fong. SOFM as his second item has gone for a GA here, which look, it's SOFM. We know he likes his quirky builds. This is not your standard second item, but I'm totally down for it. I want to see the Warlocks I mean, coming out as well in true SOFM style. I think it works on OMG. Again, the extended fights are favoring you. You have double GA, double Zonyas. Very hard for OMG to find initial kills. And that's what they want. They want someone to get blown up in the start. Like, this, like we saw in that last fight, Angel and Bane basically dying after that engage from Cream. But with these extra items, it becomes harder to do that. And if five men strong, uh, if Suning are five men strong after those ultra down from OMG, then Suning just win without doubt, especially with the 7,000 gold lead coming in and the Ocean Soul as well. This could be a make or break moment here as Angel has the moon for the siege on the top tier two. Looks like no contest from OMG, at least in the short term. That's new that gets ignited by Bin. I thought it was Cream in the 1v1 there. Bin didn't even ult. Yeah, I thought be... Bin had ulted there. He, he didn't even use it, and you nearly died. It's not, it's not looking good, <laughs> by all means. Bin, three items now, very problematic. And Aki trying to defend his jungle here, but you don't win that, and you don't have the backup. New Aki has paranoia, though. Well, he's going to try and win it. Goes he for the ulti. Ult. Bin is like, listen, bro, I'm quite happy to go for the 1v3 here. Dashes over the wall. See you later. Bin doesn't even lose half of his health. He's got Ocean I mean, I was... Soul to boot. I actually think he could have kept going there, to be honest. Yeah, I think possibly he could have, but he didn't want to risk it. But I, I was like, why is it new ulting? Then I remembered the W from Gwen just means you can't even fly oh, in God. with paranoia. It doesn't even work. And okay, I actually saw Bin pick up a Banshees and then refund it. And he's gone for the double needlessly. He's gone Ravadon. So he's like, <laughs> I want to carry, I want the damage coming in here. I respect it. I respect it big time, especially from Bin, because you know that he can carry. You know he's got the capability. So Suning, they've run out of Baron at this point. So the Siege is a lot less impactful than it was previously, but they can still pressure multiple lanes. They can still buy themselves time because Elder's coming up in two minutes. So all they need to do is maintain control of the map. They can just shift over to Elder or they can group up and try and make a Siege happen in the mid lane. Angel steals away the Moonfall. But he won't find a window just yet. The important thing is they're keeping OMG pushed into their base. It makes it very difficult to contest these neutral objectives when it's hard to push outside your base and get vision up. But they don't want to push it too far. You still have to respect OMG's win condition. The only way Suning really lose a fight is that big combo coming in and Suning just not being prepared for it. So the player's safe, back off. OMG get a little bit of time to push out and hopefully get some wards down. But this is good timing for Suning. A minute 15 before the elder spawns everyone's sort of resetting to get in position this is enough time to get back on the map push that mid wave in and then move into the the river to sort of uh, contest that dragon omg will try and take this opportunity to contest priority but again sooning are already there ong and sofm have been paired up constantly in this game and once more they're establishing control <laughs> look how aggressive bin is sat in the brush just ready for the face check into him and as soon as can muscle their way into the river. 40 seconds on that Elder Drake. And important to mention, there's an 8,000 gold lead in favor of Sooning right now. For OMG, the next minute of the game is going to be do or die. Cream has to flash away from SOFM. Knocks him up, just keeps him out of arm's reach. But no, he doesn't because the Ooh. Sonic Wave and the kick. SOFM, once again, bring the style to Lee Sin. 
as Cole desperately trying to escape, but there is no escape from the needlework. Impaling him as both carries go in here, but they just don't have the damage. Two for Bin as Wong Fung knocks a GA out as well. Abel survives, but that's all he'll be able to do. It's going to be an easy wipe here for Suning, and they can just move it over to the mid lane. Yeah, TP comes in to keep the minion alive. There's another wave coming in. Abel, the only one left to defend, and it's not enough against five members strongest Suning. Pretty convincing game overall, and they're just going to be able to take this first one in this series. Easy peasy for Suning, or at least that's how they make it look. On tries to combo Abel, true shot the rush from Angel onto the Ezreal himself. That's going to be a stylish win there from Suning. It was slow, it was steady, it was precise, and it was almost mistakeless, honestly, from Suning. That's what we needed to see, right? Clean gameplay and sure, it wasn't the most proactive game we've ever witnessed, but look, with as little mistakes as that, with great mechanical play coming out across the board, you really can't complain as a Suning fan. Yeah, I think, you know, we hoped for a little bit more in the first few levels, especially from that Lee Sin, but ultimately we saw SFM doing SFM things. He was uh, contesting camps, invading, challenging, constantly pairing up with Ong, and it caused a bit of an issue for Aki, who was kind of on the back foot from minute one as, as a result of that. And then we just saw in those team fights, the execution wasn't really there for OMG. But on the other side, again, SOFM on this Lee Sin, starting fights so well. And the end result was, we often saw critical components missing before the fight even started. We saw Cream getting taken out of the fight. We saw Abel getting taken out of the fight. And then Cream again, and it's like, if you have these ults which layer together so well, it's, it just doesn't work when you're missing a member before it starts. The Moonfall Last Breath combo can't exist if one of them's dead. Yeah, that's one of the big issues. And Abel, even though he's topping the damage here and almost the highest damage in the game if it wasn't for Bin, didn't feel like he had any actual impact in the fights, right? We're seeing a lot yeah. of Qs before fights. We're seeing a couple of ulties that hit multiple people. But realistically, it never felt like Ezreal came online. In the later stages, the team is so far behind that even when you get this combo off, there's no significant follow-up available. So Abel, again, just kind of has to sit off at the sideline, watch his team dive in, get obliterated, and then he kind of just walks back to the fight and like, well, that's, <laughs> I didn't bring much to the table, but I brought everything I had. And that's the thing is that, you know, he's doing a ton of damage, as you said, but also I don't think Suning just cared at all. It's like, if they're not dying, they're just going to sustain back up. They're going to heal back up. And something I find pretty cool is F SOFM there did 11,000 damage. Half of that was in one fight. You know that fight we saw where he was the highest damage, where it was him and Huang Feng in the end? He did like 5,800 damage in that fight, and that was half of his entire damage the whole game. Just a ton of value there. But yeah, OMG, you know, the composition suited them, but I think going into this next game, you need a jungler where Aki can be more proactive early, make an early impact, yeah. especially into SFM who's challenging you. And also maybe less sort of uh, reliance on landing those big combos, maybe a bit more gas in the tank with his extended fights, better lane matchup bot lane. These are all things we could look to see from them to make it better. And once again, the story of Akali being banned and OMG immediately losing continues. We need to see something more from OMG. We'll see if they've got more to bring to the table right after the break.